Good morning, Eastside. We're going to ask that everyone will please come on in so that we may begin our Sunday morning worship. We're going to ask that if you could, would you please stand with us as we sing our opening song, Love is a Bubbling Over. We're going to ask that if it is time for us to start our Sunday morning worship, we're going to ask that everyone please come on in. Hallelujah, think about it. Let you know I've been running every week since I made a start. Oh, you know my days up. By the way, we're going to make my burden lighter. Oh, I think love is a burden over in my heart. Oh, in my everybody singing how I'm late. with me please dear heavenly father thank you for your immutable evidence to come to worship on the last day of the year but also the first day uh, that we we serve you and worship you uh, thank you for those who prepared and did the preparations and those who look to execute uh, your daily service uh, here on this sunday morning uh, pray for those who have not arrived in their safe travels, for those who are sick and shut in that need your prayers and uh, your, your guidance. Thank you for your blessing, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, family. It's a blessing to be here this morning. Amen. We're going to ask that if you have any type of electronic... D devices, if you would please silence those devices so that we'll be able to enjoy fellowship one with one another. Let the spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the freedom of the King oh, let it rise among us. Let it rise. Let the spirit 
It's an honor and a privilege to come before you on the last year of the year to lead the congregation in a prayer. Um, please bow with me as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father in God in heaven, as we stand on the threshold of a new year, we express our deepest gratitude for the past year's blessings. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, your love, and your constant presence in our lives. Father, we acknowledge your sovereignty over the days gone by and the days yet to come. Father, regardless of the political environment, the heightened level of hostility and lack of civility, who's in the White House, we look forward to you as our hope, our peace, and our comfort in the upcoming year. Father, as we enter the unknown of the coming year, we are confident of one known, that you are God, and God will take care of his own. We ask you, Father, for guidance and wisdom in the upcoming year, Father. Even more, Father, we ask that you continue to illuminate our path with your light, so that we may walk in the ways and make choices that align with your will. We ask you, Father, to help us to uh, first seek your kingdom and trust that all things will be added to us based on our obedience. Father, as we embark on this new year, we we lift up your people. We lift up 
to you, our families, our loved ones, our communities, and the world, Father. It is our prayer that peace will reign in our hearts and in the hearts of all the people, Father. Father, we pray that you will continue to bring healing where there is brokenness and reconciliation where there is division. Father, we ask that you would bless the leaders of the world with your spirit of compassion and empathy. Um, there are many wars, struggles, clashes around the entire world. Putting on display uh, man's inhumanity to man. So we pray, Father, that you would turn the hearts of these leaders so that the level of suffering and man's inhumanity to man will stop. Amen. Father, again, as we approach this new year, we ask that you renew our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. Allow us to be transformed by the power of, our, by the power of your Holy Spirit leaving behind the old and embracing the new that you have in store for us, Father. Amen. Father, we pray that you allow us to um, reflect on the old, focus on the new, and renew our, renew our minds and our hearts to follow thy will so that we will increase and increase our spirituality and, Christian, and Christianity so that we will become the Christians that you have us to be, Father. Father, we pray that in, two, in this coming year that we will be the Christian families that you would want us to be, Father and be examples to others, Father. Father, as we, as I near the close of this prayer, I ask you to be with the speaker of the hour, bless him, allow him to come before you and uh, spread the word in a way that the least of us will be, be able to understand it. We also, Father, ask you to bless all those in need of your comfort and support. We ask you to be with the bereaved, the sick, the physically sick as well as the mentally sick, Father. We ask you, Father, to be with the job seekers, those who are looking for gainful employment, as well as, Father, those who are working in a toxic or hostile work environment, Father. We ask you to be with them as well, give them the comfort they need until you're able to make things better for them, Father. We also, Father, ask you to bless the efforts here at the church in terms of the various construction and build outs that they will be successful, Father. We also, Father, ask you to bless the church in a way that we will become the diversified ethnic community that's reflective of the overall area, Father. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for any word, thought, or deed that's contrary to your will. We ask you, Father, to continue to bless and keep us, for this is our prayer. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing and just sing hallelujah by hip hop. Oh, and all the ransom singers will together lift that hymn. Oh, we're going to sing and just sing hallelujah by hip hop. Oh, and they all went watch on. Oh, and when we get home, you know. Oh, now in the land 
and let the world say she never die. Oh, we gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, bye and bye. And in that mighty chorus, the voice is with so sweet and bland. Oh, we gonna sing and we'll sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by in by oh and oh, what joy, oh when we had all get home, oh we're gonna rest in it, rest in it, the land star, oh now in that land, that land where the saints shall never die, oh we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by Love will be our everlasting theme. Oh, we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Oh, now praising our redeemer there beside the crystal stream. Well, we're gonna sing hallelujah, we'll sing hallelujah. On the um, there's a don't him, there's a no the um, there's a then him, there's on the um, there's a then him, there's on the um, there's a you know, and I will make it, and I will make it, and him, there's on the um, there's a you know, the day, there's on the other, there's a the panel, there's on the um. There's a do no one there. There's on the earth. There's a do no one there. There's on the earth. There's a do no one there. 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 There
Lift your voices and repeat after me. This is the day, is the day that, the Lord hath made. that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice. and be glad in it. This is the day day that the Lord hath made. made. I will rejoice rejoice and be glad in it. it. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. What a beautiful day it is. What a wonderful day it is. What a marvelous day it is. Uh, You know, I think it's just a marvelous thing. Amen. I think it's... Amen. I think it's a marvelous thing that the year ended on the Lord's Day. Uh, What a magnificent way to end the year, worshiping the Lord on the Lord's Day. And I want to encourage everyone to come back tonight. Amen. Now, you know, we have our annual Old Year Out, New Year In program. And uh, we want to encourage you to please come out tonight and celebrate with us. Worship, of course, starts at 7 p.m. And I pr- trust I'll have a, a message that will close out the year and share a message with you that will perhaps help you to think about how you're going to go into the new year. And so we want to encourage everyone to please come back. And I want to take a moment this morning to thank all of you for your prayers. Uh, during my illness, I was not on my deathbed, thank God. I might have been close to it at one point, but I was not on my deathbed. Uh, you know, I, I had to go to the hospital uh, by ambulance uh, for the first time in my life, but uh, got through that, spent a few days in the hospital, and then a little bit later on, as I was recovering, I forgot I wasn't 20. And, <laughs> tried to do something I shouldn't have been doing and ended back up in the emergency room again through my own stupidity. Uh, But God brought me through that too. So, you know, I've learned some lessons, what not to do and what to do. So thank every one of you for your prayers, for your calls, for your concerns, for your cards, everything. I want you to know that you showed your love for me and for my wife. And as I have told you, I was under the care of Dr. Gale, so she kept close, close watch on me, and she colluded with the brothers to make sure that I wouldn't get back in the pulpit for a while. And I appreciated the rest. After 40 years, I needed a little rest. So uh, I'm appreciative of that, and thank every brother who stood in the pulpit uh, Sunday after Sunday and proclaimed God's word, and they all did a wonderful job. Amen. Did a marvelous job. And for those who uh, were well, pretty much one, Brother Kyle teaching on Wednesday night, appreciate him too, did a marvelous job. So we're blessed. We're blessed at East Side to have so many capable and competent men uh, and women of God as well. So we're just appreciative of all of them. And thank you so very much. I want to take a moment to recognize our visitors. If you're visiting with us, I want to ask you to please stand at this time, wherever you are. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ at Eastside, please stand so that we might recognize you. Amen. Wonderful. Please remain on your feet for a second. And let us say to you that you are indeed our honored guests. And we thank you for coming because we know that you had choices, but you chose us. And we want you to know that we are appreciative of that reality. And we want you to know that you are among friends and not enemies. And we love you and we pray that you'll give us an opportunity to greet you on a personal level once this service has ended. Let us show them some love. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And if you chose not to stand, that's fine. You still are among friends, and we want you to know that. So we still pray that you'll give us a chance to greet you uh, before this service has ended. All of the brothers, uh, after the service has ended, all of the brothers did a wonderful job this morning in leading us in our worship. Uh, I don't know, sometimes I I look around, and some people kind of act a bit out of character from my perspective. And as uh, Brother Franklin, he led such a beautiful prayer, and Caleb as well did a wonderful job. Uh, it's like Brother, Brother Franklin was praying my sermon. 
And I said, well, that's okay. We'll just put, we'll put an exclamation point at the end of that. Uh, because he prayed a beautiful prayer uh, that was so applicable to where we are now. And uh, then I looked on the stage and he was kind of rocking a little bit. I said, that's not Brother Franklin up there, you know. <laughs> He's actually rocking a little bit, you know. So I, I just said, well, I know if he's in the spirit, all of us got to be in the spirit because that's a little out of his norm. Uh, but that's good. I, I love to see that. And certainly I hope he didn't take no offense to that. I didn't mean anything other than just it was good to see even the spirit moving him in that way. So because he's a little reserved, uh, but it's good to see that. Now, if you have your Bibles, we want to ask you to open your Bibles to Genesis 48. Now, you know you have to work with me a little bit. I don't get to the point that fast. So, amen. But we'll get there if you stay with me. I will try to stay close to my notes so that I don't extend it too far. Uh, since I've got to kind of brush the rust off a little bit. Uh, Genesis chapter 48, verses 15 and 16. And if you don't have a copy of God's Word with you, it will be on the screen. And I think that this is an appropriate lesson to end the year. The Bible says, And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, let my name be named upon them in the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. That may not make a, make a lot of sense to you right now, but even my subject may not make a lot of sense to you, but if you follow a lesson, the lesson you'll see where I'm going with it. And I want to close out this year with the topic, it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Genesis chapters 40, 48 and 49 record for us the final years, days, and hours of Jacob's turbulent, tempestuous, and colorful life. When Jacob arrived in Egypt after learning that his son Joseph was alive, he was 130 years old. Look, if you will, at Genesis chapter 47, verses 7 through 10. Genesis chapter 47, verses 7 through 10. The Bible says, Then Joseph brought his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. Now, I want you to notice some things, if you will. Notice how Jacob described his life in part A of verse number 9. He said, go back to verse number 9, if you will, of this same text. He said, and Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. 
And Jacob said in part A of verse number nine, that the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. First, I want you to notice that Jacob described himself as a pilgrim on a pilgrimage as he traversed the meandering roads and vicissitudes of life. What's so important about that? It's important because a pilgrim was one who wandered through the land with no permanent dwelling place in the land. But you must understand that Jacob was speaking metaphorically of his pilgrim, of his spiritual pilgrimage. In other words, Jacob understood that this world was not his permanent dwelling place. Notice, if you will, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 through 16. Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, these all died. Now, when you take into consideration the old chapter of chapter 11 of Hebrews, primarily this is talking about the patriarchs. Of course, that would be those prominent patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but others as well. But these all died, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were, watch this, strangers and pilgrims on the earth. But I don't miss that. Strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Go ahead and read. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they came out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Now, go back to verse 14. I want you to notice what he says. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Now, the Greek word for homeland literally means fatherland. Uh, F-A-T-H-E-R, fatherland. It literally means one's native country. And notice that this native country was not on earth. So often I hear brothers and sisters, uh, you know, us, say that we would like to visit the motherland. And I'm all right with visiting the motherland. But my desire is to dwell in the fatherland. Say amen if you can. The motherland is fine, but I'm looking for the fatherland. The fatherland is the land where God dwells. Church, I'm looking for that city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God. That no one can ever invade, that no one can ever pillage, that no one can ever bring any evil into that place. I'm looking for that land that the Bible calls heaven. And Jacob said, I have pilgrimed here for 130 years. And then he describes his years as evil, full of evil, few and evil. Genesis 49, 47 and verse number 9. Go back. I want you to look at this. Genesis 47 and verse number 9. And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that Jacob said his years have been few. Now here's a man that right now is 130. But he says his years have been few. What that tells us is simply this. That no matter how long we live, as far as God is concerned, and as far as we should be concerned, understanding that there is something called eternity. 
We need to understand that no matter how long we live, the few years that we live are but a bleep on the radar of eternity. And that's why we should not put all of our stock in the things of this world because everything in this world is temporal. It's all temporary. It's all momentary. And it's all disposable. We can't take anything out of this world with us when, not if, when we leave this world. Paul said it like this in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 7. He says, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. I read a story not long ago and uh, the story was very interesting because there was a man who literally wanted to be buried in his 1973 Pontiac. And do you not know that they actually buried this man in his 1973 Pontiac? They had him sitting behind the steering wheel and they buried him in that car. I want you to understand that he didn't go anywhere. His Pontiac didn't take him one foot in the grave. I want you to understand that all of that was just merely foolishness because even though he was buried in the car, that's all he was, was buried in that car because the car could do him no good. Brothers and sisters, listen to me carefully. If we are living for just this world, we are living an empty life. If that's all we are hoping for, it's what we can gain in this present world. If we're just living for the material things of this life, the next promotion, the next raise, the next bull market, the next vacation, the next party, the next high, the next relationship, the next sexual encounter, the next iPhone, the next model of your favorite car. If that's all you're living for is what you can gain in this world, your life is empty and your life is vain. And it will never be satisfaction, satisfactory and it will never be fulfilling because Solomon said it well in Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, all of this stuff is vanity. Solomon said, I had it all. I had women, I had wine, I had wealth, I had wisdom. But at the end of the day, he says, this is what life boils down to, serving God, fearing God, and keeping his commandments. If God is not in your life, then your life is empty. And Jacob said, his life was but a few days, and they were evil. He echoed Job's words before, uh, we, before we ever read them. In Job chapter 14 and verse number 1, you remember what Job said, man that is born of a woman is of what? Few days and what? Full of trouble. Amen and amen. I know that some people have turned that around and said that man that is born in a few days, he's in trouble with a woman. Well, <laughs> that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> That might be true, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says man born of a woman is a few days and his life is going to be filled with trouble. Jacob said, my life has been filled with troubles, sorrows, pains, and hardships. Just look at my life. Jacob would say to us, if I could just borrow your mind for a moment and, and project my life on the screen of your mind, and let you travel with me. I will let you see that my life has been a mess from the beginning. Stay with me. Before I was born, I struggled with my brother Esau in the womb. I mean, even in the womb, I was fighting. Before I ever came out of the womb, I was in a struggle with my own brother. In fact, when I was born, I reached out and grabbed my brother's heel. And they called me heel catcher. Jacob, which also means trickster. I colluded with my mother Rebecca to trick my father Isaac into giving me my brother Esau's birthright. And then when I stole his birthright, Esau, he, he got in his heart that I'm going to murder my brother because he stole my birthright. To escape his wrath, 
I had to travel approximately 500 miles to my mother's homeland to Haran in Pandalaram to live with my uncle Laban and my uncle Laban was a scoundrel in fact he put trick in trickster <laughs> while living with my uncle Laban while living with my uncle Laban I met this pretty little thing called Rachel and she was beautiful and shapely the Bible says in fact she was so pretty and I was so in love with her she gave me a nose job yes, sir. Yes, sir. so much so that I said to Uncle Laban I'd work seven years for her and so I worked seven years and on my wedding night old tricky Uncle Laban pulled a switcheroo on me oh he waited until it was dark oh yes and I went into the tent and wasn't no light in the tent and when I woke up the next morning I said Leah what happened to Rachel and Uncle Laban said I, I forgot to tell you that in our land uh, we must wed the elder before the younger but I tell you what fulfill Leah's week go ahead and celebrate for a week and I'll give you Rachel but you're gonna have to work seven more years after I give it to you and so I had to work 14 years just for Rachel but I got her after seven and my uncle Laban agreed to give me Rachel but then my uncle Laban misused me and took advantage of me for 20 years of my life notice what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 31 verses 38 through 42 the Bible says these and Jacob is talking to Laban he says these 20 years I have been with you your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried they're young and I have not eaten the rams of your flock that which was torn by beasts I did not bring to you I bore the loss of it you required it from my hand whether stolen by day or stolen by night there I was in the day the drought consumed me and the frost by night and my sleep departed from my eyes thus I have been in your house 20 years I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock and you have changed my wages 10 times unless the God of my father the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac had been with me surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night in other words he says all of these years for 20 years from the day that I arrived you have been messing over me 20 years you have abused me and misused me and after leaving Iran on the way to Canaan I had a wrestling match with a divine being and he crippled me for life that's why I limp right now I'm just talking about the evil in my life after I return with after I reunited with my brother Esau I moved to Shechem and while in Shechem my daughter Dinah was raped by a boy named Shechem and then my sons Simeon and Levi as an act of revenge to for what happened to their sister killed every man in the city of Shechem and because of their murderous deed I was forced to leave Shechem and relocate to Bethel and from Bethel I moved to Bethlehem and during that time that I was moving from Bethel to Bethlehem the love of my life Rachel died on the road just a few miles from Bethlehem and I had to bury her on the side of the road long after, not long after that my oldest son Reuben went in and laid with my concubine Bilhar and sometime after that my father Isaac died and me and my brother Esau buried him in Hebron and then one day ten of my sons came back with the coat that I'd given to my son Joseph and it was it was covered with blood and I believe with all of my heart 
that my son had been devoured by a ferocious beast. And for 20 years plus, I believed that until I got to Egypt and saw him for myself. I'm just trying to tell you, when you look at my life, it's been filled with evil things. Are y'all with me, church? And as we stand on the precipice of a new year and look back over 2023, I think it's safe to say that most of us have encountered some difficult times. Or in the words of Jacob, most of us have experienced some evil. Most of us have experienced some trouble, some pain, some suffering, some sorrow. Whether it is physical or emotional or all, our lives have been touched by something in 2023. I know for certain that some of us buried loved ones and some are still to be buried. Some buried mothers, some buried fathers, some buried siblings, some buried spouses and other loved ones. Some of us experienced personal sickness. Some of you have had children, siblings, parents, or other loved ones that faced serious illnesses, and some are still faced with those same illnesses. Some have lost jobs. Some have lost your health. Some were subjected to multiple surgeries that did not fix the problem. Some have experienced alienation from family members. Some have had trouble in your marriages. Some had children who disappointed you and by getting in trouble at school and some in trouble with the law. Some of you have suffered abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and sometimes, unfortunately, sexual abuse and perhaps all of the above. The list goes on and on. I'm sure that we all have had our bad list. We all have had and have our Jacob list. We all have things that didn't go right for us in 2023, not to mention in our entire life. Have I witnessed in the house this morning? But here's what I want you to see. And what I want you to recognize about Jacob. These words in Genesis chapter 47 and verse number 9 are not the concluding words of Jacob's life. In other words, the final chapter of his life had not yet been written. Oh, y'all stay with me, church. Jacob still had 17 more years of life to live in Egypt. And the epilogue of Jacob's life reads differently than his initial words to Pharaoh when he first moved to Egypt. And that's what our text is about in Genesis 48. What it's about is helping us to see this morning that life is really all about perspective. Stay with me, church. It's all about your vantage point. It's all about what you choose to focus on in life that determines your attitude towards God, your attitude towards life, your attitude towards self, and your attitude toward others. I'm sure that all of us can look back at 2023 and point out everything that went wrong this year. All of us can look back and focus on all of our hurts, all of our pains, all of our disappointments, all of our frustrations, all of our failures, all of the maltreatment we have been subjected to and received, all of the negative things done to us, all of the negative things said to us, and all of the negative things said about us. I think all of us can look back and we can pinpoint those things in our lives that went wrong in 2023. Do you have your list? You don't have to testify. I know I'm dealing with human beings and I know life. And since I'm dealing with human beings and I know life, I know we have something that we've dealt with that was painful. Or we can choose to focus on what's right in our lives. Stay with me. We can choose to focus on what God enabled us to overcome in 2023. We can choose to focus on what God has brought us through in 2023. 
The choice is ours. We can focus on the good or the bad in our lives. It's all about perspective. It's all about what I choose and what you choose to focus on in life. When Jacob first got to Egypt, he said, man, this is my life. Few days and full of evil. But now, 17 years later, Jacob has a different perspective. I want y'all to listen. When he comes to his final days and his final hours of his life, his perspective was much different from 17 years earlier. Look at the text, if you will. Watch this, Genesis 47, verses 27 and 28. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. 17 years he lived in Egypt. When he first came to Egypt, he looked back over his life and he saw all of his pain. But now he's at the end of his life and his perspective has changed. Watch what it says, Genesis 48, beginning at verse number one. Genesis 4. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel, that's Jacob, strengthened himself and set up on the bed. I want you to get this image in your mind and see this, if you will. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make you a multitude of people and give, you, give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. In other words, I'm adopting them as my children. I know they're my grandsons, but I'm making them my children. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring whom you beget after them shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance as Ephraim and Manasseh. But as for me, when I came from Padan, from Padan Rachel died beside me in the road of Canaan on the way when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, who are these? And Joseph said to his father, they are my sons whom God has given me in the place, in this place. And he said, please bring them to me and I will bless them. There is an old man on his deathbed. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. And now he's going to bless his grandsons, his adopted children. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact God has also shown me your offspring. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, God in his hand knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. In other words, he crossed his hands. And there's a reason that he did it. I don't have time to go through all of that today. But watch this. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day. 
the angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them and the name of my father, fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his hand, his right hand, on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. But Joseph, and Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. And so the Bible says, so he blessed them that day, saying, by you Israel will bless. Saying, may God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he said Ephraim before Manasseh. I want you to see, brothers and sisters, that here is a man now who has come to the end of his life. And I want you to notice what he focuses on 17 years later. He's had 17 years to look back on 147 years. And when he looks back after these 17 years or 147 years, he has a new perspective of his life. And I'm hoping and praying that it does not take us to the end of life before we have a new perspective on our lives. Don't wait until you get on your dying bed to finally see the blessings of God. Don't wait until you get to the end of life before you see now I see the hand of God on my life. I want you to see how Jacob saw his life after 17 years of reflection on his 147 years. And in Genesis chapter 48 and verse number 15, go back to that text. Jacob begins his blessing of Joseph through the blessings of Ephraim and Manasseh by putting, uh, uttering rather, an invocation to God. Notice what he says. Verse 48, chapter 48, and verse number 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me, all my life long to this day. Now watch what he says. Remember that this is a blessing that Jacob is praying and bestowing upon Ephraim and Manasseh through which Joseph by default is also being blessed. And Jacob starts with God. Stay with me. But not just any God. He starts by acknowledging the one and only true God, the God of Abraham and Isaac. Now, you may not understand the importance of this, but I want you to understand that where they are, these boys were born in Egypt. And their mother was not a Jew. Amen. So she was an Egyptian woman. And so they have Egyptian in them and they have Jew in them. And so what I want you to see is he wants them to understand that even though you are in the land of Egypt and they have many gods in this land, there is only one God and I'm going to bless you in the name of that one God. I want y'all to see that church because this is important. He wants them to understand, I don't care how long you live here, never lose sight of the one true and only God. And so he says, God, God, boys, I'm starting with God, but not just any God. I'm starting with Elohim. That's the name that he uses here when he says God, Elohim in the Hebrew. And it's the same name in Genesis 1 and 1 where the Bible says in the beginning God, in the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth. 
And that word Elohim means all powerful one. Jacob wants his grandsons to know that there is no power like Elohim's power in any person, in any form, in any place. None of the so-called gods of Egypt can compare to the one true living God, Elohim. Church, we need to teach our children to know the one God. But we've got to know him to teach him. See, our children are leaving the church in droves. And the reason that they're leaving the church in droves is because they don't have faith in Elohim. They don't have faith in the one true God because we live in this pluralistic society and they're being bombarded all the time that there is no God or there is a multiplicity of gods and they're confused. And we cannot depend on them to get all of their information from the pulpit on Sunday or the Bible classes on Wednesday. You're going to have to spend some time in your home teaching your children to know the one true God. If we're going to save them from this world and if the church is to have a future with our next generation, then parents must be involved in blessing their children in the name of God. Are y'all listening to me, church? Our God, when he says Elohim, he wants them to know that he is omnipresent. He is always everywhere. He is everywhere at the same time. He is in all places at all times. He is omniscient, all-knowing and never learning. He is omnipotent, all-powerful and has no weaknesses. This is our God. He is the creator of the universe. And since he is the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, I want you to know that he is even more than just creator. Look, if you will, at Genesis chapter 17 and verse number 1. Genesis 17 and verse number 1. Because the Bible says when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord. Now watch that. All uppercase. L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Whenever you see that in your text, your English text, whenever you see all caps for Lord, it is that Hebrew word Yahweh. That is the I am that I am. That is the self-existing one, the self-sustaining one, the one who needs nothing and who needs no one. He is the I am that I am. He has always been and can never not be. He just be being and he can never not be being. Are y'all listening to me? He is the I am that I am. He said, I want you to understand that this God that you serve, that I'm blessing you in, his name is Elohim, and he is also Yahweh. But not only is he Yahweh, he is the almighty God. I want you to understand that not only is he everlasting from everlasting, the I am that I am, but he's also almighty. He is El Shaddai. In other words, the all-sufficient one. When you have him, you have more than enough. When you have God in your life, you have the one who holds everything in his hand and who has all of the resources in the world. He is El Shaddai. Yeah. Jacob said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk. Now don't miss this image. Here's the image. That Jacob is painting. He depicts God as a watchman watching over them as they walk before him. Now imagine this that as they walk, God is watching over them. As they walk, they're never walking alone. God has an everlasting eye upon them. But not only is he watching over them, but he has his protective hand around them. And so what he wants them to understand is simply this, that as our fathers lived before our God and lived for our God, he had his all-seeing protective eye over them and his all-powerful protective hand around them. So what did he say? The reason that they made it 
was because of God. And the reason that I made it is because of God. How did Jacob make it to be 147 years old? From his new perspective, he made it because God kept his ever watchful eye over him and his ever protecting hand around him. Now church, how did you and I make it through 2023? How did we make it? We made it the same way. The God that we served protected us and watched over us. How did you make it through all of your trials and tests and hardship? We made it because God watched over us and God protected us. He watched over us when we didn't know the danger was around us. He watched over us while we were on our sick beds. He watched over us while we were sleeping in the very image of death and didn't know what was going on around us. He watched over us on the dangerous highways and protected us from death and injury. I can't tell you how many times I was driving in 2023 and the highway was shut down and I had to be diverted and detoured another way because somebody just got killed. And thank God it wasn't me. Thank God it wasn't my wife. Thank God it wasn't my children. Thank God it wasn't any of you that I knew. What I'm trying to tell you is every time you leave your house and get back home, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. And every time you wake up in the morning, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. He watched over us while we flew across the skyways. How many of you flew in 2023? Caught a flight somewhere. Amen. Aren't you glad that even though you don't understand physics, aren't you glad that the plane stayed up in the air? I don't know how all of that metal with all of those suitcases can fly, but I thank God they can fly. And you know, folk always ask me when I get where I'm going, did you have a good flight? I said, every flight that I walk away from is a good flight. I don't care how much turbulent I have between the launching and the landing. If I walk away, it's a good flight. <laughs> say amen if you can. I'm just trying to say that God has watched over us. He watched over us on our jobs. He watched over our children in the schoolhouses. He watched over our homes and, and everyday mundane routine things. We did not have to have uh, the bad news that our children were gunned down in the schoolhouse. We didn't have some crazed person walk up on our job and gun us down because he's mad. I'm just trying to tell you, church, we have been blessed. God has watched over us all this year, and not only all this year, but every year of our lives. The psalmist said in Psalm 127, verses 1 through 7, put it up if you will. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Aren't you glad that God never goes to sleep? Aren't you glad that God never gets tired, that he never gets weary, that he never has to take a nap? God watches over us 24-7, 365 days, and on leap year 366. Are y'all with me? He will not let, he, he watches over Israel. He never slumbers nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. Now watch this. I want you to understand. Don't just look at this as something that's, that's, that's all-encompassing. That he watches over East Side. No, God watches over George Michael Williams. You see, George watches over Russell Clemens. George watches over Cale Williams. Whatever your name is, God not only watches over all of us at one time, but on a singular level, God says, I'm watching over you as an individual because I care about you as one person. And I care about everything that's going on in your life. Are y'all with me, church? Watch this. The Lord watches over you and the Lord 
is your shade at your right hand. Hallelujah. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Thank God that God has watched over us in 2023. Have I witnessed in the house this morning? Can you say amen to that? Let me tell you something. The point is this. We didn't make it to the end of 2023. We didn't make it to be five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, and some of us 90 years old. And if you're older than that, you sure enough didn't make it because you're so smart. Because you're so careful and because you had a particular diet, you made it because God kept his all watching eyes over you and his all protecting hands around you. Amen. I'm not saying that you ought to just do it and everything, but I'm going to tell you this. You can eat all of the right stuff, drink all of the amount of water that you need to take all of the vitamins and sleep as much as you want to, and you can still die of a heart attack or die in a car accident or something else happens to you. Just because you do all of the right things does not mean that you're going to live. It takes God to keep you alive. And if you're alive this morning, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Listen. Listen to all of the times. I, I'm trying to keep my eye on the clock. But I, I won't be very long. I haven't been up here in a while, so give me a few minutes. I won't be very long. I'm not too much. I'm almost at the end. Listen to all of the times that the Bible tells us that God was with Jacob. See, you see, you know, it's hard to see stuff when you're in it. Amen. I, I mean, when you're in the mess, you can't hardly see God's hand. See, when Joseph was in that pit, he didn't see the hand of God. When Joseph was in Potiphar's house and Mrs. Potiphar was lusting after him and lying on him and had him thrown into prison, he didn't see the hand of God. No, sir. He didn't see the hand of God until he was in the palace and his brothers came and bowed down before him. He said, you didn't send me here, but God sent me here. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. See, sometimes we have to get over some stuff and through some stuff and stand back and look on, look down the tunnel of life and then we start seeing God's hand all through our lives. Oh, I can see all many, so many times, even before I knew God, even before I knew God, when I look back now, I can see how God was working in my life and protecting me from myself and my foolishness. Can somebody say Amen. I know, I know some of us live some foolish lives. I know you ain't always been an angel. Uh, am I right about it? I don't want to have you to stand up and testify or make a confession, but I'm just simply saying that we ain't all been right all the time. And we made some foolish choices and foolish decisions in life, but God protected us because God said, I got something else for you to do in life. Are y'all with me, church? So, so Jacob didn't see all of that until... Those 17 years in Egypt. Listen, listen. In Genesis 28, 15. I'm not going to read all of these. I'll write them down. I'm going to read them. I'll call them out to you. You can read them when you get home. Genesis 28, 15. Behold, I am with you. This is God. And will keep you wherever you go. And will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. God said, I'm not going to leave you, Jacob. I know it may appear that I left you, but I'm not leaving you. See, sometimes we think God has forsaken us, but God cannot lie. And whenever we are in the thick of it, what we need to do is remember the promise of God that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And remember that God cannot lie. Genesis chapter 31 and verse number 3. Genesis 31 and verse, the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your family and I will be with you. Over and over again. I'm not going to read them all. Listen to just, just, just write these down. Genesis 31, 4 through 7. Genesis 31, 29. Genesis 31, 40 through 42. Genesis 35, 1 through 4. Genesis 46, 1 through 4. I'm just trying to tell you that in every one of those verses, the Bible tells us that God was with Jacob. And guess what? We can write all of our own testimonies down that God was with me 
when this happened. God was with me when that happened. Because I'm still here and in my right mind. Look again at Genesis 48, 15 as we try to close this out. Genesis 48, 15. And the Lord blessed, and, and he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all life long to this day. The Hebrew word for fed literally means to shepherd. In fact, the New American Standard Version says, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. The NIV says, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. And the English Standard Version says, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day. Guess what? Before there was ever a 23rd Psalm, Jacob said, the Lord is my shepherd. Hey, hey, are you listening to me? See, see, it was the Lord who took care of me. It was the Lord who walked with me. It was the Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. It is the Lord who, who made me lie down in green pastures. It was the Lord who led me beside the still waters. It was the Lord who led me down the paths of righteousness. It was the Lord who was with me through the valley of the shadow of death. It was the Lord who prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. It was the Lord who anointed my head to keep me protected. It was the Lord that made my cup run over. And it is the Lord that had his grace and mercy following me all of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall lack nothing. David said it, but before David said it, Jacob said it. The Lord guided me. The Lord protected me and the Lord provided for me. That's how Jacob views his life now. His perspective has changed. He has learned to count his blessings instead of his burdens. Can you count your blessings? Before you say yes, listen to the rest of it. Can you count the blessings that you received from the Lord in 2023? I dare you to try to do it. Because it is a matter of impossibility to count all of your blessings from this year, from the Lord's hand for this year. If you were to talk, try to count God's blessings, you would have to start with every step, every breath, every meal, every beat of the heart, every heart, every hour of sleep, every bit of seeing, every bit of hearing, every bit of tasting, every bit of touching. Church, we cannot count the blessings that God has given us in 2023 and shame on us if all we do is complain about how bad 2023 was. How bad my life is. How bad my husband is. How bad my wife is. How bad our children are. You ought to thank God for the good things that are right in your life. And don't say that there's nothing right in your life because if you say that, you are slapping God in the face. How many times? Well, let me help you here. How many times did God forgive you this year? I lost count. Huh? Or did you live the whole 2023 without ever committing a sin? <laughs> How many times? Stay with me. I'm almost through. How many times did God extend his grace and his mercy instead of executing the justice that you deserve? And Jacob said, I realize, I realize that we're in the land of Egypt. And I know that Pharaoh said, we can live in Goshen, the best part of the land of Egypt. But I want you to understand, boys, Pharaoh ain't the source of our blessings. I want you to understand that the Lord is the source 
of all of our blessings. The Lord has been my shepherd and he is the one who has provided for me. He is the one who has protected me. He is the one who has guided me through this life. And what, we, what he did for me, he will do for you. The God of Abraham and Isaac is the one and only source of all our blessings. Have you been blessed? Do you recognize your blessings? Are you thankful to God? Can you just take a day, a, a break from complaining? A day from focusing on what's wrong? And spend a whole day just saying, I'm going to think about all that's right. And say, thank you, Lord. As I close, verse 16. Verse 16. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named among, upon them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Jacob referred to God as the angel, capital A, who has redeemed me from all evil. There is no question that this is the Lord. This is not some created being, some celestial creature that God created. This is the divine creator. And the critical word in this verse is the word redeemer. Watch this. He redeemed, he redeemed me from all evil. That is the critical word. The Hebrew word is goel. The word for kinsman's redeemer. The goel was a blood relative who could avenge you and who could redeem you from your creditors and who could redeem you from any situation and every situation that you found yourself in that you could not get yourself out of. Are y'all listening to me, church? So when Jacob said that God had been his goel, his kinsman redeemer, he is saying that the divine goel is related to his people by covenant. Don't miss this, church. In other words, God sees us as his blood relatives. Listen to me. We are God's children in fact, not in fiction. Amen. See, you ought to, that ought to change your heart right now to know that, hey, look, I, I'm a child of God. Listen to this. Say it with me. I am a child of God. Do you believe that? Do you understand the significance of that? That God is your father. You are his child. And God says, because we are tied together by blood, and that blood that ties us together is the blood of Jesus Christ. I am sure enough a child of God, and I'm tied to him by the blood of Jesus Christ. And God says, because of who you are and the relationship that I have with you, I am your kinsman's redeemer, and I can get you out of any and every situation that you find yourself in. And if you've been in some jail, in 2023 and you got out know who did it God did it so what's the point Jacob said I made it to the end of life these 147 years because God has been my divine angel who has been with me and delivered me from every danger I've been confronted with and I say to every one of us here this morning as I close out this sermon you made it through 2023 because you had God as your redeeming angel Amen. he truly looks upon us as his children tied together by the blood of Jesus Christ he has done for all of us all year long what we could not do for ourselves he helped us he kept us he fed us he protected us, he guided us, and he delivered us, even when we didn't know that God was doing it. It's all about perspective. Amen. And Jacob said, at 130, my life is full of evil. 17 years later, he said, the Lord has been with me, and the Lord took care of me, and the Lord delivered me. And the Lord brought me through it all. And I'm just trying to tell you that when he got to the end of his life 
And he looked back. He focused on the good instead of the bad. What are you focusing on? I hope that as you come to the end of 2023, you will stop saying, this went wrong, that went wrong, I don't have everything I need. But you're going to go out here and get in a car that's got enough gas to get you back home. Going to turn your heat on, perhaps. Amen. Amen. Go and get home, open the door of your house and walk in. Amen. Got shelter. Yes, Decide which television you want to watch. <laughs> Decide what you want to eat. Yes, and make a decision as to whether or not you want to come back tonight. All right. <laughs> you got so many blessings. And I'm just trying to get you to see, church, through it all. God has been good. Amen. Don't ever forget that. Why not close out this year by becoming a child of God? If you believe that Jesus Christ came, suffered, bled, and died for your sins, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, that he is the Christ, the Son of God, if you believe that, will you repent? Will you repent of your sins? Will you say, Lord, I'm ready to live for you now? I'm tired of living for this world. Will you confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And upon that confession, give your body to be buried in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of sins, to have your sins forgiven. The grace of God will save you and he'll add you to his family, the church. You'll be a Christian, a child of God. Live for the Lord. The Lord will watch over you. The Lord will protect you. And when it's your time to leave here, he'll take you with him to glory. Amen. Will you come as we together stand and sing? Your grace and mercy brought me through That's it, that's it. I'm living this moment because Jesus.
church say amen. We, we appreciate, uh, he's back by the way. We, uh, we, we really appreciate, uh, I call him brother GMW. He's back. All you have to do is wind him up and turn him loose. And we just appreciate uh, the way Brother Williams delivered the sermon this morning. And what a powerful sermon for, on December 31st. We have the invitation that's still open. It's an opportunity for those that uh, desire to be baptized. You can make it known now by walking down these aisles and let the elders know that you want to be baptized. On December the 31st, 2023, anyone in the audience, and if you don't want it to be known in front of the audience, just let us know after church. No, we still have a 24-7 policy. 24-7. We have some members here that can testify to that. They'll let you know 1 o'clock in the morning. So if, any, if you don't uh, want to come down front, then certainly after church. And those that are online, just let your desires be known also. Anyone that want to place membership with us today? Is there anyone? If not, we'll appreciate the elders. And it's time, prayer time. Uh, Brother Williams makes it so easy to pray. He's already preached. All I need to do is just say just a few words. And what we'll do is we'll do a general thank you prayer this morning. So let us go to God in prayer as we thank him for what he has done for us in 2023 and what is to come in 2024 if he allows us to make it. Let us pray to God. As we bow our heads this morning, God, we thank you for what our eyes have witnessed and what our ears have heard. We thank you for letting us be in this place at this time. We thank you for the visitors that have shown up and we pray that you would continue to bless their lives. We know, God, we heard a sermon where Brother Williams stood here and he talked about what we should be thankful for. We know, God, that you have blessed our lives. You have allowed each and every one of us by this time to have a birthday. While we don't know if we'll have another one, God, we thank you for letting us have one in 2023. We thank you, God, for the Judases in our lives. Those that would smile in our face and stab us in our back. We thank you for them, God, because they keep us closer to you. We thank you, God, for the situations that like Egypt in our lives. When we feel captive. When we feel there's no way out. Because we know when you deliver us, God, it was only you. And we give you praise, glory, and honor this morning. We thank you, God, for the health you have given us. There are some in this audience that are suffering from health ailments. Some medical terms we cannot even pronounce. But you brought some through cancer this year. Somebody in this audience was dealing with diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, we thank you, God, for giving us medicine, though, God, to take care of those situations. And if the truth be told, there are some dealing with issues they don't even know about. We know, God, that the problems are many, but the solution is one. And that is to pray to you and know, God, that if we give everything to you, you've shown us that you're faithful and you can handle our problems. There's been none too big for you. But we pray that we turn everything over to you, God, and that you bless us and continue to bless us. And if you allow us to make it into 2024, we pray that you would let us be better than we were in 2023. Don't let us take any grievances over from 2023 into 2024. Let us have a thankful spirit, a humble attitude. While we don't know if all of us will be here another year, we just thank you for letting us be here in 2023. Bless us, God, as we prepare to continue to move forward with our building program. We pray, God, for the things we haven't, haven't even seen, but we know that you already have 
given us blessings in those areas. We pray that we will see the building, the Family Life Center. We pray that everyone here will enjoy it, God, and we pray, God, that you would continue, God, just to bless us as a family, as a church. Take care of all the situations that are out in the audience tonight, th today, all of those who have issues. We pray that you would deliver them from those issues. And if not, God, give us some strength in our shoulders and some running in our feet so we can continue to run this race, knowing that one day, God, that it will be over, and there's nothing we can do when we're dead. Let us have the spirit and attitude that anything we put our hands to, that we're going to do it to the best ability. Watch over and guide us and be with us, God. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, who died for us all. Amen. As we prepare for our communion, if you need a packet, if you would please raise your hand so that the ushers may be able to bring you a packet. Oh, what wonders love I see freely shown for you and me and by the one who did atone and just to show his master's grace Jesus suffered for the brave and in Gethsemane alone oh, and oh what love what love and a master's love love and oh definitely been full and filled from God's word today. Uh, I pray that yours has as well. Uh, we have reached another portion of our worship service, the communion. And as was already preached, 
God has given us the greatest gift that any of us can receive in our lifetime, and that is his son, Jesus, coming down to take our place. Uh, he lived a perfect life, um, but he came and died for us because of our sins, and he shed his blood on the cross. And at this time, we want to just think about that and remember what he did, knowing that it should have been us, but he took our place. Before you're hearing, I will be reading from 1 Corinthians, starting uh, with chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please go with me to our Father in prayer to ask for thanks for this bread. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so awesome and amazing. We thank you for this gift. We pray that we never take it for granted. We thank you for letting us see this first day of the week, the last one of this year. We pray that we not listen to the whispers of Satan, but just think about all that you have done for your son dying on the cross. We pray that this, for this bread that we are about to take, that we remember the suffering that he did on our behalf and take it in the right manner. In your son's name we do pray, amen. Continuing at verse 25, <clears throat> in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Let us pray for the cup. Once again, dear God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and the blood that was shed that covers our sins. We thank you so much for that. We have no hope without this. And we pray that at the minimum, we remember this some 52, 53 times a year but we pray that we take it throughout the week in our heart and carry it and just re remember and be thankful and live a life that shows thanks for this sacrifice. Thank you so much. We pray that we take this cup in the right manner that represents this blood that was shed for us. In your son's name we do pray, amen.
And now for the offering. There are multiple ways in which you can participate. As you can see, you have the option to um, give your offering online um, through the Shelby Next app. Um, you can mail it in as well to the P.O. Box, and please uh, do not send cash. And if you have your offerings available here in the auditorium at this time, the ushers will begin to collect, and while they are collecting the offering, I will take a moment to read from God's word before we say a prayer for that offering. I will read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 6, in the manner in which we should give. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. At this time, let us pray for the offering. Dear God, there's nothing we can give to pay you back. But we thank you for the opportunity to give out of the abundance in which you have first given to us. We thank you for our jobs, means of income, whatever you have bestowed. We know that you have blessed us all and we just pray that we give out of the right spirit, dear God. We pray and thank you for uh, the leadership that you have put in place here at this location of your body. Um, and we pray and, and, and just continue to uh, ask for prayers for them and how the money is spent in the upbuilding of your kingdom. We just thank you for their spirit and the, and the men that, that serve in that capacity. We thank you so much uh, that we are able to give whatever that is, but whatever it is that we give it in the right spirit. Uh, dear God, uh, we pray that we live better tomorrow and today than we did on yesterday, if you give us that day. Uh, be with us and guide us. In your son's name we do pray. Amen. Good morning, Eastside. And all of those who are visiting with us, we're close to the end of our worship service, but I've got some very important information that I need to relate to the congregation. As many of you are aware, uh, December 31st marks the uh, time when we have our old year out, new year in program. And just want, want to remind everyone that that program will take place this evening. Um, uh, this, this evening, uh, our worship service, our evening worship service will take place at 7 p.m. Shortly after that, we'll have a fellowship meal, and then we'll get into our old year out, new year in program, which should be a very, uh, very special time. Uh, along those lines, the GPA Student Recognition of Achievements program will also take place during our old year out, new year in program. If your student made all A's, a combination of A's and B's, or all B's this past semester, or if they placed first, second, or third place in sports, or first, second, or third in, uh, in the arts uh, category, we ask that you would please scan the QR code on the screen as it comes up, uh, or see Sister Coleman or members of the GPA committee today to get the code and then turn that information in as soon as possible. If you have already completed the form, please hand those in this morning. Uh, we hope to see you and your students at the New Year's Eve uh, service. Thanks to GPA committee. I'd like for all the GPA committee members to please stand so that uh, those who have forms, they can turn that information in to you. That's Sister Coleman here, uh, Sister Wakita there, and okay. Hey, yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Russell Williams there. Okay, thank you all very much. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, just recently, just recently, uh, Sister Tracy Burkhalter's mother passed away, 
and uh, the memorial service for her, that her name is uh, Virginia Bell. The memorial service for her will be held here at Eastside on Friday, January 5th at 11 a.m. And we're asking that everyone who can to please come out and support our uh, sister Tracy. One very special uh, announcement to those of you who, uh, who uh, give your offering by using an envelope. We, overall, we'd like to say thanks for everyone for, your dil for diligently giving your offering either by the Shelby Next app, online, or by mail, or even in the envelopes. However, however, we have one small tweak that we need to uh, talk to those about who give their offering in, uh, in their envelopes. If you would, if you would, please check that your handwriting is legible, all right? Those, those who handle, handle the offering have a pretty good history of member penmanship, and so they can kind of decipher whose ever it is. But on occasion, we get one or two where we just really can't tell. So we're asking if you would to please check your handwriting to make sure that we can uh, make distinction. All right, that's all that I have, Brother Jackson. Good morning, Saints. Uh, just a few brief things. Um, if you were able to visit the youth YSG table in the foyer, uh, we've got some events that we're doing to kick in the new year in January. Uh, one of those is a winter retreat. Uh, we want to make sure that we fill up all the slots that we can. We've already made a down payment to hold the camp for ourselves, so if you're interested, you. Uh, lapsed in judgment yesterday or last Sunday and you meant to sign up, please sign up for that winter retreat in the foyer. And then this Saturday we'll have our first service project. Um, it's a mystery service project. Uh, so that creates anticipation. Uh, so please sign up for that if you want to know what that is. That'll be Saturday here. Uh, we'll meet here at the building and then go to our service project. From there, we'll get in the van and drive to our service project. So if you're able to do that this Saturday uh, around noon, please sign up for that in the foyer as well. Uh, lastly, two things. Um, there'll be a youth conference meeting next Sunday. Uh, so if you're interested in the youth conference in any capacity or just want to hear more information, next Sunday we will have a youth conference meeting. And then if I could get seven brothers to help me with uh, a brief physically demanding task right after worship uh, to just meet me up front. So, so, some young brothers. All right. Brother, brother. So if I get seven uh, brothers, uh, and if you're older and you just want to work out, come down and help me out as well. Uh, several, just about seven brothers to come down here right after worship. It won't take long at all. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, just real briefly, um, if you want to print out those who are go going to be on the uh, Old Year Out, New Year In program, if you want to print out to see your time slot, see me and give me your email, and I'll email it to you. And we'll probably have some printed up when you get here, but I don't know if you want to know prior to you, how, how long y'all have. So uh, if you want to do that, get, to it, get, get, to, get with me. Also, we're going to have a special presentation for those who are in the service. So if you're in the service and you're uh, going to be here tonight, we'll have a special presentation. And of course, y'all know my brother Jackson and brother Ethan uh, Jr., they're going to be hosting it. So just be looking forward to seeing everybody. But if you want a printout of uh, your time slot, I, I can email it to you before prior to y'all getting here. So thank you. Let us all stand for a closing prayer at this time, please. Let us pray together. Come, Father in heaven, we thank you so much for another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, dear Lord, for our brother Williams, your servant, blessing him with the strength to come back. Thank you, dear Lord, for watching over him and giving him the strength. We thank you, dear Lord, for the message that was delivered. Help us to focus on those things that are, are good, knowing that all good and perfect blessings come from you. We pray, dear Lord, that you would be with us as we depart from this place and bless us to return back at the next appointed time. For it is in your Son, Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.